I call the Honourable Member Moana Mackey. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, and, and certainly I have to agree with the Speaker who's just taken a seat that, that anyone who's had the, the courage to try and bring about any kind of legislative change in this area does deserve to be uh, recognised. There's no question about that. I wasn't aware uh, of Tuku Morgan's bill to ban tobacco displays. Um, and, and, but that's fine. That, 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 great. And everyone who has, and I know from Steve Chadwick's experience, uh, you know, the personal threats that were made against her and her family, it's not an easy area uh, to get into. So I think perhaps for the Honourable Member who's taken a seat, where I have an issue is with some members of the National Party who are now making out that it's all because of them that this, that this legislation has come around. And I recognise the Minister and the Chair for all the work that she has done. Well, to, to be fair, this issue has been around for a long time and our local National Party member refused to turn up to events to support the banning of tobacco displays. She refused to accept the postcards that the Youth Ambassadors for the Cancer Society had collected and she refused to provide support. So from my personal experience of having supported those young people and the Cancer Society in Tairawhiti to ban tobacco displays, I haven't seen up until tonight a lot of support from the National Party but I welcome it and I think it's very important that these issues have cross-party support. And this part, of, part one that I want to, to speak to is, is the area of exemptions from the advertising of uh, the, the pro prohibition of advertising of tobacco products, because of course we know that that um, the, the, the companies themselves will be looking for other ways that they can get the, the, the advertising of their products out there. And I remember when I worked um, when I was at high school and I was working in a, in, a, in a dairy, in a lotto shop, in a superette, not long after the changes had been made that banned tobacco advertising, you know, we saw suddenly these big displays come in because they saw that the loophole was, OK, well, we can't go out there and advertise, but we can use the packaging itself as an advertisement and we can use the displays that hold the packages as an advertisement. And I very much remember having um, people from the industry come into the, the, the business that I worked in, look at the area behind the counter right next to where all the lollies are stacked up and seeing how they could get the best value out of that display. Now I think there's a serious question to be asked as to whether Parliament ever actually intended that. I think when Parliament banned the advertising of tobacco products back in the late 1980s that, um, that they had not intended that these power walls become the, the, the kind of de facto advertising. But that is in fact what happened. And, uh, you know, these, I have to say, you know, you work with a lot of industries, when you're, when you're working in retail and there's a lot of industries that come in to look at how their products are placed in your business and the business that I worked in had quite a high turnover, uh, I never saw as many um, representatives from any other area of industry as I did from the tobacco industry when I, when I was doing that after school job. Um, they were in on a regular basis. I never saw as much turnover of these advertising um, displays as there were in the tobacco area. So clearly, and, and we know because billions of dollars has gone into to, um, developing these power wall displays and getting the best value out of them, so, so, so clearly they have an impact because these companies wouldn't spend the money on them um, if they didn't, but I, I'm very, very pleased to see the closing of that particular loophole in this legislation. So the question then comes, and I note the, the extensive work that the Select Committee did in, um, in uh, new sections 22 and 23, which do deal with the exemptions, because there do have to be exemptions. Obviously, in, internal um, company uh, pamphlets or information needs to be exempt from this. There are going to be some artworks that involve using tobacco um, insignia, tobacco products, and we wouldn't want to see them exempt. There's also the very fraught issue, of course, of all the, the, the television, the radio, the magazines, the newspapers that are produced outside of New Zealand. Uh, and so we can't begin to tell, you know, CNN that they're not allowed to, to uh, that they have to adhere to this law as well. But then I think the Select Committee has drawn a very fine line. I think they've done it particularly well in saying that it's provided that, that that particular form of media wasn't specifically meant for New Zealand or for the New Zealand market, then obviously they would be exempt as well. We know that internationally there's been an enormous argument about the use of tobacco products and tobacco advertising in the movie industry. Uh, for a while there was a real move away from showing any, any form of use of tobacco products. I think that's gone back the other way. These are not things that we can control in New Zealand, nor should we try to, but they are things that we do need to be aware of because 
from my own experience of seeing how the tobacco industry was able to use the power walls as a loophole in the previous legislation, I have no doubt that they will be looking for loopholes in this new legislation. I call the 